Hey everybody, welcome back, Kevin, the OG, the original Grognard here for Lock and Load Publishing, and we are back at Lock and Load Tactical Digital because I seem to do lots of videos on Lock and Load Tactical Digital. We got some really cool stuff that we've added in, and we wanted to go ahead and do a quick video to show those off a little bit. Uh, the reason we're doing this is we've got the new 5.1 artillery rules with the variable artillery fire missions uh, put into the game, um, and if you want to find where these at, you just go into the options, you click on the game rules tab. We have vehicle size modifiers vehicle speed modifiers we got the 5.1 flammable hex fire checks i know some people don't like that so you can go in here and turn it off you got the hold down rules where vehicles can attempt to enter hold down positions and we've got the new artillery rules if you don't want to play with any of these optional rules just go into the options menu under game rules and click on and off choose whichever ones you want to play with which ones you don't want to play with All right, and hit finished and let's go ahead and load the game because i've set up a little situation so we can just show off uh, some of these new artillery barrage rules so I got a bunch of American leaders out here let's go ahead and grab this guy right here go ahead and choose the artillery field piece to bring up the new artillery fire mission uh, diagram or options choices uh, so let's just go off we've got 105 millimeter artillery fire missions uh, so in case you've got a scenario that has multiple uh, different types of sizes of artillery. You can choose specifically which one you want. We're going with uh, with the 105s in this one. Uh, click on standard fire mission, and then where just as normal, just wherever you want to drop it, and it'll show you now which the center hex is, which is kind of the darker one, and the six surrounding hexes, and it'll show you what firepower each one will hit at if the artillery lands there. So now let's hope the random number generator is a little bit kind to us this time so we can show off all these. So go ahead and fire the spotting round. It rolls its dice. And it landed off the map. <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and end the impulse. Let's go with the... Germans passing. Now let's go to one of our other leaders. Let's go ahead and click on him. Let's click on artillery. Let's keep with standard fire mission. Again, let's go ahead and drop it like that. Let's go ahead and fire the spotting round. Okay, now the spotting round landed up here, which is out of line of sight, so it doesn't do anything. The random number generator is not being kind to us. Alrighty, let's go ahead and in the impulse. Let's go back over and let's choose another one of the American leaders that we have out here. Let's go ahead and bring up the artillery fire mission again. Let's go with standard fire mission again. And let's see. All right, there we go. So we got it landing on board this time. And it just shows up as a normal artillery barrage affecting the center hex and the six surrounding hexes. Like a normal fire for effect fire mission would be. Let's go ahead and end the impulse because you can only launch one artillery strike per impulse. Oop, we didn't want to do that. Okay, so let's take our German guy and just move him up there, shooting artillery at me, so he's going to run a little bit further away. And <laughs> impulse. Now, let's go ahead and grab another American. Oh, no, we don't have any more artillery fire missions we can fire this turn, so we're going to have to end the, end the turn anyways. All right, we go back. Initiative. We got the rally phase. We got no rallies. Let's continue. Operations phase. All right, so let's go ahead and choose this guy this time. Again, let's bring up the artillery. Let's go with a concentrated fire mission. Now, a concentrated fire mission this time is going to look... Oops. Concentrated. All right, this is going to look a little bit different. The center hex is going to be a little bit darker because basically concentrated fire mission is I want you to kill this specific point of the map. So you're going to get a little bit more firepower. Again, we're using 105 millimeter firepower, which is normally firepower five. But since it's concentrated fire mission, the center hex is going to get more fire affecting on it, while the outside hexes are not going to be as much. Uh, so that basically you're, you're telling the artillery, focus on this specific point right here, all guns on this point. We go ahead and see if we can, oh, it, no more artillery. Oh, well, we didn't get our connection roll, so let's go ahead and pass and pass. And let's see, there we go. Let's go ahead and bring this guy up. Let's do concentrated fire mission again, see if he can get his dice rolls. The RNGs are not being, oh, okay, so we got it right there. And it was out of line of sight. <laughs> Oh, I don't get to do that one either. RNG is not being fun for us today. So let's go ahead and end the impulse. Let's go ahead and bring it back over to the Americans. That's why I put a lot of Americans out here so we can show this off. Let's go with concentrated fire mission. Let's go ahead and uh, land it right there. Fire spotting round. There we go. And go ahead and make sure. And 
it's just like a normal artillery barrage. Nothing changes. It's just, well, the, 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 the blast effect does not change. It's just that the center hex is going to get a little bit more firepower at the sacrifice of some of the surround of the six surrounding hexes, uh, firepower. So again, if you really, really want to mess over one hex, you go with the concentrated fire mission. Let's go back to the Americans again. Uh, and that was the one artillery uh, barrage we could fire. So let's just go ahead and pass and go on to the next turn to show off the next artillery type. We can rally, go through the rally, get into operations. Let's go ahead and choose this guy again. Maybe he'll be a little bit uh, a little bit more, more accurate with his artillery rolls. This is the loose fire mission. Okay, now the loose fire mission is much different because if you'll notice, the artillery blast pattern is much bigger than normal, but it's at sacrificing over half of the firepower for each individual hex. Instead of the a center hex and the six surrounding, it's now a center hex and up to two hexes away. Now, why do you want to use this? A lot of times, if you're the attacker, you're going against defending units. Maybe you only will end up with firepower one or two in a, in a loose fire mission. But one of the reasons that you want to do this, and some people have pointed this out, and they thought it was kind of an inadvertent thing that happened. It's like every hex that you fire through, uh, fire through or fire for effect through is a degrading fire hex. So, And you can only fire through two hexes of degrading terrain before it blocks line of sight. This blast is a really good way to give yourself some cover, either on the advance or on the defense and you're trying to pull away. Um, some people think that that was kind of a mistake. No, that's that's exactly what this was designed for. It's it's kind of a one-turn smoke screen to either screen yourself from being shot at on the attack or screen yourself from being shot at on the defense. So let's go ahead and fire the spotting round. And of course, we ran out of artillery. Ah, dash rolls are not being good with us today, so let's see if we can get this guy to get his artillery off with a loose fire mission, so we can show off what the loose fire mission is. Fire the spotting rounds. Ah, oh, there we go. On time and on target. I ain't ever been that yet. And it's so pretty, because it makes all the hexes have an explosion in it. So, Pretty powerful artillery. May not do a lot of damage, but look at all the that hexes that it is now screening. So you don't have to worry about getting shot through more than two of those hexes. And yes, that's the, that's what it's designed to do. Uh, so let's go ahead and flip on to the next turn. Initiative for the Germans. Go through the rally phase. Pass for the Germans. All right, let's take this guy again. I got faith in him. I got faith in him. We'll get an artillery off with him. Now we got a line barrage. Now, a line barrage is exactly what it sounds like. Instead of the center hex and the six surrounding hexes, it's the center hex and a line of seven hexes. Uh, the British mostly used line barrages. Line barrages were kind of a thing uh, in uh, mostly used in World War One, but the British used it a lot in World War Two. All all the nationalities really kind of did. Just other nations would use them more than others. And like I said, the the, the British were were infamous for using line barrages. Uh, again, it's going to be you know it's to seven hexes total. It's just they're all in a line now, and you can set the line direction. You've got these buttons here to swing left to right, so you can you know plop your hex and then rotate the barrage any way you want let's fire the spotting round okay so it's scooted over this way so we'll be safe and there you go line artillery barrage and the ffe stay out there for the entire turn like all normal artillery so let's go pass 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 go on to the next turn so we can get the last artillery barrage off the rally phase, flip through the rally phase, pass for the Germans. Okay, we're going to take this leader this time. All right, so now the last one we've got is a walking barrage. Now, again, this is something that was mostly used in World War One, but again, the British used it a lot in World War Two. I know they used it extensively uh, at Monte Cassino in Africa, but this one, if you notice this time, it's only got three hexes on it, but it's it's three hexes wide and you can set the line direction whichever way you want, and then you can set the artillery the direction you want it to walk. Basically, it's going to drop artillery this turn, and for the next two turns, it's going to shift one hex in whatever direction you want, 
or set it at, and it'll just walk along. So let's go ahead and fire the spotting round. Okay. And so you got the three blast hexes. Now, one thing I do want to point out, whatever direction is the top of the counter, if you forget, that's the direction the artillery is going to walk the next turn. And it's going to always walk in the same direction. So let's go ahead and end the impulse. Because during the next turn, let's go through the rally. Do you wish to continue the walking artillery barrage? Yes. And go through the rally phase. And basically, the, the artillery barrage has now walked one hex further in the direction it's supposed to go. So let's go ahead and pass again and go into the last turn, which will be turn eight. Initiative Germans. You want to continue the walking artillery barrage? Yes. Zoom past the rally. And it will automatically move the artillery barrage up and walk its third and final hex. Um, so those are the different types of artillery fire missions. You will also notice that there was uh, a spot for smoke barrages. Some scenario special rules will allow you to fire smoke barrages with the uh, artillery, but that's usually set by scenario special rule. And if that is a scenario special rule involved in the scenario, then you'll see that smoke as an option uh, as part of your artillery barrage strikes. So that's been recently added in. Um, we do have some exciting news. We do have East Front's coming now. It's not going to be Heroes of the Motherland. Heroes of the Motherland is going to be a while for us to get that out. Honestly, at the end of the day, that's got like 26 different maps in it. That takes a long time for us to put in. So we've got, <laughs> we're actually releasing the expansion for Heroes of the Motherland before we re are releasing Heroes of the Motherland because Heroes of the Motherland is going to take us so long to do. We're going to be able, and we want to get the East Front out to you guys. So we're going to be releasing an expansion pack called Valor of the 13th. Uh, and that's going to be taking place at Kursk. Uh, it's, it's most of the fighting. Well, all the, the, the scenario is, is, is based around the fighting just outside the Punyari rail station. Um, and it's going to have 10 scenarios in it, uh, including two absolutely massive scenarios. There are only two maps in the game, but each of the maps are absolutely huge. Uh, one of them is the size of, I think, uh, eight maps eight normal uh, lock and load maps and the other one is the equivalent of six lock and load tactical maps um and so the kind of historical they're quasi historical maps um and there's going to be five scenarios on each one of them and a couple of the scenarios are actually really huge we've got one scenario that's got like 40 tanks in it for both sides not 40 tanks on both sides but 40 tanks total so it's, it's going to be really armor focused um we've got an optional set of new armor rules where you can uh, damage or destroy the 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 weapon system or the turret of a vehicle or damage and dis or destroy the mobility of a tank so you know when you when you fire at a tank you could you know knock it out completely or you can knock out its gun system or you can you can damage its tracks and slows its movement down so that's going to be a set of optional rules that are going to be available in uh in valor the 13th and we're hoping to have that out I, I can't give you time on that soonish. The scenarios are done. Uh, Tom's working on programming those all in. Um, but that's coming out, and that will give you access to the entire uh, Eastern Front order of battle mix that basically the heroes of the motherland mix um we wanted to get that out because it was going to be quicker for us to get that out rather than for us to try to get heroes of the motherland done because that's eh, not going to be done anytime soon so we wanted to get the eastern front uh counter set out there for those of you that want to do the battle generator with the eastern front so yes technically the expansion is for Heroes of the Motherland is going to be coming out before Heroes of the Motherland. Um, but, and, of course, obviously, you don't need Heroes of the Motherland to play Valor of the 13th. Uh, it's just a, a quicker way for us to get the Eastern Front counter set to you guys so you can start playing it. Um, so that's all I've got. I just wanted to go ahead and let all you guys know about the uh, the, the new artillery uh, barrage uh, 5.1 rules that are now in Lock and Load Tactical. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms in the comment section below. And I'll see everybody later. See ya!